Today we're talking about basic dialogue mixing in Adobe Audition. Hey friends, my name's Oliver, and for video production, dialogue is always a critical part whether it's a voiceover, a recorded talking head, or any other natural dialogue type elements that you use to drive your story forward, whether it's commercial production or YouTube videos or anything in between. So today we're talking about the mixing process for just the dialogue. I use the word mixing, but you could also say processing or affecting. How do you actually mess with the sound and quality and signature and EQ of the dialogue track in simplest terms possible in Adobe Audition? If you're working in Premiere, they go hand in hand together. So we're gonna look right into that right now. <laughs> so in here in Adobe Audition, you have no files loaded. You can either round trip this from Premiere or you can go ahead and just grab it from your hard drive or wherever you have it. And for me, I've got it on the desktop waiting for this tutorial. Now, once you're in Audition, in the single track editor, which is the easiest and best way to do dialogue for Audition and I think the strongest suit of, uh, the strongest argument for using this app with Premiere is this right here is the single track editor. You get a front row view to the entire waveform. You can also choose this magical tool up here on the top left called spectral frequency display. All this does is it isolates the waveform to the top, you know, quarter of the screen. And at the bottom, you have this massive X, Y graph where you've got time on the X axis and on the Y axis, you have frequency in Hertz and inside with colors, you have amplitude. It's pretty amazing. The brighter the color, the yellower the color, the, the stronger the amplitudes, and the cooler and more purple the colors, the weaker the amplitude. So you have three really important distinctions and helpful visual tools to help you make good mixed decisions when you're in audition. So first things first, with any piece of dialogue, you have to see if you need noise reduction. So we're gonna go ahead and listen through in the quiet parts here. Got a little bit of ambiance, a little bit of hiss from the recorder being used, some traffic sounds. Let's just see how bad it is by pressing the plus key to zoom all the way in. It's really not that bad, but let's just be safe. We're gonna capture a noise print by selecting up in the waveform. It'll drag out a selection, which will just kind of loop your noise floor. You're gonna to go to effects, down to noise reduction and restoration, capture noise print. You can also hit shift P. This captures the exact print of your sounds so that it can run a proper noise reduction. Now click out of your little box that you selected back to effects. Now that the print has been captured, it remembers and noise reduction process is available, which you could also hit shift command P if you're feeling crazy with your fingers. Pull that up and you can go ahead and play. Hit output noise only, hear what you got. Their stock uh, parameters are gonna be 50% noise production, reducing by 16 decibels. That just means it's gonna kill the sound in half at a 16 decibel decrease. So we'll back up with the minus key, go to a place where you actually have the dialogue signal to hear if it's making a big difference. Wyandotte County has a rich history of welcoming immigrants and celebrating our diversity, but so that sounds pretty clean, but now a trick is to use output noise only to see how much of his dialogue you're extracting in addition to the noise. So there's quite a bit of frequencies of his actual dialogue. So let's not reduce it by 50%. Let's go up to about 75. So I was wrong. I think there's been an update where they flipped this thing around on me. So the noise reduction percentage is how much is getting reduced. We were at 50%. I'm going to take this down to like 25%. It won't reduce as much as the noise. Uh, it won't reduce as much of the noise, but it will reduce less of his actual dialogue, which is helpful. Okay, then when you're ready with those settings, make sure your output noise only box is checked off so that you don't lose everything on the process. Because this dialogue box right here, whatever you want to call this, will do exactly what you tell it. Hit apply. Always reduce your noise first, because if you apply any sort of compression, de multiband compression, any dynamic range processor, your noise reduction will be more difficult after that in the signal chain because the noise floor will be fluctuated as it's trying to bring down peaks. So keep that in mind. I always noise reduce very first in my mix. <laughs> now that that's done, right away in your, little spectral dis in your little spectral display down here on the bottom, you can see it's a little bit cleaner in between his hot takes, less noise. It's great. Everyone loves it. So after that is done, navigate down to your effects rack, turn that on. You can make that bigger. You can do whatever you want with it. 
It's your world, your oyster. I'm just trying to help you out. First things first, compressor. Always do the compressor first, in my opinion. Grab a single band compressor. Before you even touch these parameters, look at your peaks. At the very bottom of Audition, you have a master levels. Look at those levels and see where they're consistently peaking. Wyandotte County has a rich history of welcoming immigrants and celebrating our diversity. But in recent decades, we've seen a real increase in that reputation as we've transitioned in a lot of ways in terms of our demographics and our population. So as normal uncompressed signals, it's kind of all over the place, even though it doesn't really sound like that. We've seen it go as high as negative four, as low as negative 20. So somewhere in between that, I like negative 12. That's where you want to set your threshold. The threshold of a compressor, if you've ever seen one of my compressor videos, is the level at which a peak will turn on and engage the compressor. That's all it is. It's just the point at which if that audio comes up above that threshold, that's when the compressor knows to turn on and compress. Once it's on, what is the ratio you want to compress your signal? A very nice, gentle ratio for dialogue is 4 to 1. So that 4 to 1 ratio, think of 4 to 1 as an inverse fraction. So any sound that comes above the threshold will be quartered, 1 fourth. That's what that ratio means. So the higher the number at the front end of that ratio, the more it will be compressed. For example, limiters, which are trying to just crush anything that comes above it, can be like 30 to 1, 100 to 1, not really letting any sound above that threshold. A nice gentle compressor that, that won't sound too intense is 4 to 1. I like to use that. But experiment with yourself and use your ear always. Use your ear and the tools to try to get a good sound. Attack and release, you can leave the same. Those are pretty simple settings for dialogue. Output gain is simply... After you compress, the levels do generally come down because you are grabbing those peaks and pulling them down, and a lot of times you can boost that right in the compressor, get it back up. I don't like to do that in this because we're going to do that with a limiter on the back end. So when that's done, click out of it. You'll apply all of these together when you're done. After a compressor, I like to do a de-esser. One thing about a de-esser is it is a compressor only on the sibilant frequencies, the frequencies of your S's and P's, I guess just S's, S's and she's. Your S's and cheese, any of those snaky sounds that people make when they talk, that's called sibilance. Those frequencies in men are usually 5,000 to 8,000. In women, it can be six, 7,000 to 10,000 hertz on the actual EQ scale. So we're talking about EQ, but that's the parameter in a de of where to actually compress. So it's the exact same thing as a compressor, but it's only doing it on specific frequency bands that you set. So how do you know where to set it? Well, let's go into our de right here and play through. Our neighborhood really has a story to tell. Uh, if you go back to 1980, all the way up to 2017. So you have to just carefully watch right in here as he says his snaky sounds, S's and ch 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 CH's, whatever you want to call that. During that period, Wyandotte County lost 57. Okay, so let's go in. We got some rich siblings. We're going to loop that, cycle that, if you will, and see what's going on on the frequency spectrum. During that period, Wyandotte County lost 57, 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 lost. So you see those spikes right in where this is already preset? That's where his siblings generally is. So multiband, we keep it right there. No worries. Threshold, we'll work on that in just a minute. Center frequency, we're going to bump it up a little bit. And we're going to exceed the bandwidth to really grab everything that he's saying. From about 4K up to like 8K, it looks like. Lost 57, lost 57, lost 57, lost 57, lost 57, lost. Now, test it by clicking the output sibilance only. See how I moved the frequency up a little bit, the center frequency? I moved it up in the EQ and messed with the bandwidth a little. Just find the harshest point in your ears, and that will be reducing those S's and ch sounds by about 32 decibels at a threshold. 57 lost, 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 57 lost. Now that'll be reducing it by the threshold you set. Now this threshold is different than a compressor's threshold. This isn't saying at what point does it engage. It is telling the compressor how much to pull it back. So I usually start around 20 dB and see what that sounds like. 57 lost, 57 lost, 57 lost, 57 lost. 
We'll toggle it on and off to do a uh, side by side. Lost fifty seven. 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 Lost. So it's pretty subtle. We'll bump to twenty five. Fifty seven. Lost 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 fifty seven. Lost. You see the gain reduction is engaging, so it is working. I like to keep this pretty subtle. Too much is too much. So a little goes a long way here. You're just trying to make an, a pleasing listening experience for everyone listening. Okay, we're done with that one. Make sense? Got questions? Put them in the comments. After that, I like to go to a simple parametric EQ. Grab that up. Now, I recorded this project with a Rode NTG3, which is a wonderful dialogue mic when you're out in the field. It was a big room, so it was a great shotgun mic to use indoors. The only issues with that mic is it's pretty warm, and that can be cool for voiceover stuff, but when you're doing just dialogue-y, talking head, I like it to be a little bit cleaner. So I already know where to go and what to pull down because of my NTG3, but you can turn on an analyzer in additions parametric EQ to see what is going way up high and what you need to kind of pull down. The only rule for EQ is, is sometimes when people want a lot of high end in their sound, the, the easy thing to do is just boost the top end. Well, before you do that, always pull down your low mids because when you pull down your low mids, you kind of have a perceived better top end. And that way you're not messing with your, your gain staging or your amplitude before you get to your limiter. So we're gonna look at the uh, analyzer right here. During that period, Wyandotte County lost 57,000 white residents. You're you're already seeing quite a lot of these low frequencies coming up above everything else on the top end. So you can just see visually what you're hearing in your headphones that you're hopefully wearing that the low mids need to come down. So you can do this here or you can do this down here, but I like to just start by grabbing the number two, which is kind of the low mid band, bring it down four or five decibels. Come down here, you see you can set your frequency of where the center is. I like to keep that between 200 and 300. This bottom button is actually engaging or disengaging the points of uh, EQ processing. The Q right here, this number, basically the lower the number, the more bands it's re reducing, the higher the number, the thinner, more surgical frequencies you're trying to remove. But in this case, we're gonna have a pretty wide Q as I'm decreasing a lot of his low mids. Now there's a bunch of rumbly mic stuff going on so we can just take a low pass filter here and just drag that down. But this one, uh, you, you're gonna wanna make that shape a little more severe so that you don't have a lot of loss. Now let's listen through it and we'll do a uh, side by side. County. When you lose a third of your population, you can imagine vacant homes, boarded up businesses, schools closing, really an economic downward spiral. Uh, interestingly though, during that same period. Now that we've cleaned him up a little bit, we can put a little bit boost on the top end because we like that. We saw an increase of 37,000 Latino residents. So people from Latin America coming in, starting businesses, fixing up homes, economic activity and a lot of positive results. Now it sounds a little bit weaker right now because what I've done by pulling down those low mid bands is actually decrease the overall amplitude or volume of the signal. So it'll beef back up when we, when we add a boost on the limiter. Okay, you ready for that? Okay, so the final parameter for this very simple, basic a little tutorial is gonna be a limiter. So we'll go find that under amplitude and compression. It's called a hard limiter. You don't have to get intimidated by the hard. It's just meaning that it's not going to let anything go above its threshold. A hard limiter is also called a brick wall limiter, and it's any limiter, I believe, with a ratio above 30 to 1. So it could be 100 to 1, meaning that if the, the audio goes above that threshold, it's going to be just a percentage of what it originally was, effectively cutting it, keeping clipping from happening in your mix. So we'll go back up here and look at our peaks down at the very bottom on that big levels meter. Wyandotte County has a rich history of welcoming immigrants and celebrating our diversity, but in recent decades, we've... So basically our peaks aren't getting much above negative nine, negative seven. So what I would do is boost that to about negative three, where your peaks aren't going to go above negative three, because you will then bring it back into Premiere and mix it in with everything else and do your actual loudness processing after the mix is complete. You just don't want to risk clipping in any way, shape, or form in your mix at this point. So I wouldn't push it past negative three. So negative nine to get to negative three, that's six. So six decibels of input boost. Now what's maximum what's maximum amplitude? That is how high you want that amplitude to actually get. So if you just boost it all the way to zero, that's gonna try to cut it off before it gets all the way up there. I like to just put this at negative one. 
which we may not even need to get there because we don't want the limiter actually squashing our signal. We're just trying to give a clean boost and be safe. Again, look ahead and release, leave those as is, and listen and look. Interestingly though, during that same period, we saw an increase of 37,000 Latino residents. So people from Latin America coming in. And I'm totally okay with that. I'm totally okay. Go to another section of your dialogue, make sure it sounds clean over there. Days we focus on undocumented immigration, but um, in our situation, and as is true. And when you're done, when you like it, go down here to the bottom left of your effects rack and hit apply. Go up here, you see the little asterisk next to your file. Go file save, or of course, control S, command S rather. Boom, and it's done. And if you've done the dynamic link from Premiere, it will automatically send the save signal back. If you do a different workflow where you edit everything and then edit the original in Adobe Audition, you can go back into Premiere and do a replace footage thing where it brings in the new file and replaces it all your cuts. Or however your workflow works, Adobe is really good at that dynamic link technology, whatever you want to call it. I like it. And that's that. So let's do a side-by-side -side here where we bring in the original next to what we just processed and listen to them side by side and you can tell me if I did a good job or if I did a bad job. Okay, so I brought in our original signal. Look at it right here. Before we even listen through it, you see kind of the wild spikes and valleys. That's just the uncompressed signal. We did some gentle compression to it and you can see that the, the amplitude is up because of the limiter, but it is a little bit more leveled out. And that's important when you wanna get it above your mix. So here's the original. Up to 2017, we've seen some dramatic shifts in the demographics of our community. Um, up to 2017, we've seen some dramatic shifts in the demographics of our community. Uh, one of the things that began happening, uh, one of the things that began happening in 1980 was that white residents started leaving Wyandotte County for better schools. 1980 was that white residents started leaving Wyandotte County. So you can hear right away the noise reduction was really critical because we don't have that nasty noise floor anymore. The EQ just barely cleaned it up just enough. We're not pushing things too far. The compressor leveled out, evened out the amplitude so that we don't have a bunch of spikes jumping way high in your mix when you get it back in and add music sound effects and everything else you like to add, candy canes and popsicles. So that's it, that's the whole shebang. If you have any thoughts or questions, hit me up in the comments. I love interacting with keyboards. Otherwise, I'll see all of you next Tuesday. Thank you.